In June 1978, Crane was living in the Winfield Place Apartments in Scottsdale, Arizona while appearing in Beginner's Luck at the Windmill Dinner Theater. On the afternoon of June 29 Crane's co-star Victoria and Barry found his body in his apartment after he failed to show up for a lunch meeting. Crane had been bludgeoned to death with a weapon that was never found, though investigators believed it to be a camera tripod. An electrical cord had been tied around his neck. Crane's funeral was held on July 5 at St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church in Westwood. An estimated 200 family members and friends attended, including Patty Duke, John Aston, and Carol O'Connor. Paul bearers included Hogan's Heroes producer Edward Feldman, co-stars Larry Hovis and Robert Clary, and Crane's eldest son, Robert. Crane was interred in Oakwood Memorial Park in Chatsworth, California. More than 20 years after his death, Crane's widow, Sigrid Valdis, had his remains exhumed and transported approximately 25 miles southeast to Westwood Village Memorial Park in Westwood. After her death from lung cancer in 2007, Valdis was buried next to him. According to an episode of A&E's Cold Case Files, police officers at the crime scene noted that John Henry Carpenter called the apartment several times, and did not seem surprised that the police were there, which raised suspicions. Carpenter's rental car was impounded and searched, several blood smears were found that matched Crane's blood type. DNA testing was not available at that time. Due to insufficient evidence, Maricopa County Attorney Charles F. Hyder declined to file charges. In 19-N-I-N-T-Y the Maricopa County Attorney reopened Crane's murder case, investigators re-examined and retested the evidence found in June 1978. Although DNA testing of the blood found in Carpenter's rental car was inconclusive, Detective Jim Raines discovered an evidence photograph of the car's interior that appeared to show a piece of brain tissue. The tissue samples that had been found in Carpenter's car the day after Crane's murder had been lost, but an Arizona judge ruled that the new evidence was admissible. In June 1992 Carpenter was arrested and charged with Crane's murder. At Carpenter's NINTENNINTY4 trial, Crane's eldest son Robert testified that in the weeks before his father's death, Crane had repeatedly expressed a desire to sever his friendship with Carpenter. Carpenter had become a hanger-on, he said, and a nuisance to the point of being obnoxious. He testified that Crane called Carpenter the night before the murder and ended their friendship. Defense attorneys attacked the prosecution's case as circumstantial and inconclusive. They countered testimony that Carpenter and Crane were on bad terms, and they labeled the determination that a camera tripod was the murder weapon as sheer speculation, based on Carpenter's occupation. They disputed the claim that the newly discovered evidence photo showed brain tissue, noting that authorities did not have the tissue itself. They pointed out that Crane had been videotaped and photographed in compromising sexual positions with numerous women, implying that a jealous person or someone fearing blackmail might have been the killer. Carpenter was found not guilty. He continued to maintain his innocence until his death in 19-N-I-N-T-Y-8. Crane's murder remains officially unsolved.